ends of the table rather than the middle. So sit, sit at opposite ends of the table. This is a lesson, this is a lesson that you've probably done before and we'll go through it and we'll add rollers as we go. But um, I'll inject, I'll break up the lesson with some hands-on kind of FI-ish work. Yeah, so a little bit of ATM, a little bit of hands-on, a little bit of ATM, a little bit of hands-on, and we'll see where we go from that. Okie dokie. So sit on your table in such a way that if you wanted to, you could stand up. Now, the most important thing in this lesson that we're going to do together is exactly what the important thing was yesterday when you were doing all that roller work, the quality with which you do it with, the quality that you bring to it, okay? So know that that's always in the background. Please stand up. And sit down. Stand up as if you wanted to find out how do you do that? How do I, what is this business of coming up to standing? How do I do it? Which is quite a different kettle of fish than standing up and sitting down. Consciousness is a really funny thing. Right now, you can be super conscious of how you're standing up and how you're sitting down. Can you, become, can you be conscious of how you're being conscious? It's difficult. Yes, it is. What's your style of being conscious? Are you trying to grasp details and try to hold on to them? Are you simply softly gazing at details and noticing and going, hmm, that's interesting? So we have styles of paying attention, styles of being conscious. I wonder, is there a style of being conscious, of being conscious of your movement that would allow you to stand up and sit down more easily? That's a mouthful. Is there a style of being conscious, of being conscious about your movement? Hmm. And as long as you know that you're standing up and sitting down, notice I haven't set any boundaries. As long as you know you're performing the act of standing up and sitting down and there's a quality to it, the form which you use is, um, is up to you. Okay, the next time you're sitting down, stay there. And please turn, rotate your head right and left, or if you prefer, left and right.
Feel what it's like to move your head using the muscles of your neck and upper spine. Is there another way to turn your head that you're not using the muscles of your neck whilst sitting? Is there a way to turn your head, to rotate your head, so that you're not using the muscles of your neck? Great. Some of you are starting to turn your pelvis and move your knees which means one shoulder goes forward and the other shoulder goes back. That's a solution, absolutely. Is there another solution? Watch your conscious style as you involve yourself in observing, of being conscious of how you're solving this so-called little motor game, this motor problem, what's your style of being conscious of being conscious? Stop in the middle, put the palm of your right hand on your forehead, the palm of your left hand on the back of your head. And now using the power of your arms, rotate your head between your hands. So now you're using the power of the arms to move the head. And chances are the neck muscles are minimally involved. Is that true for you? Check it out. Are your neck muscles minimally involved? There has to be some involvement because you're keeping your head upright. So they're working, but they're not necessarily working to turn your head. Keep doing what you're doing Get into a rhythm, whatever that rhythm is, a tempo, a rhythm. You can let your arms down, pause for a moment and rest, you can come back, just get into a rhythm. A rhythm in which you're conscious of not using your neck muscles to rotate your head. And now once you're in that rhythm, keep the rhythm going, keep it going, keep it going, and come up the stand. Keep it going. Keep it going. That's it. If it, if it becomes interrupted, if you lose the rhythm, just simply go, oh, I'm conscious at that moment, I lost the rhythm, and just continue. Just become conscious that you've lost the rhythm, and then find the rhythm again. You just note it. Oh, yes, that happened. This happened. Happened again. Didn't happen that time. Wonderful. Please stop and rest. So here we go. This is our first interlude, working with, um, working with someone hands-on. So given that there's two of you to a table at the moment, could one person choose to remain sitting, they're the student, and the other person sitting on the same table, could you stand up? and stand um, beside your person, your student, stand beside them. Students, you might need to move across a little bit so that um, 
the person has, your, your teacher has easy access. Now, teachers, could you put the palm of one of your hands on your student's forehead and the palm of the other hand on the back of their head And now you provide the impetus to turn their head right and left. Students, you maintain your head upright. That's your job. Keeping your head upright is your job, students. Teachers, your job is to make them into those sideshow little clowns, you know, that you put the ping pong balls in. Oh, yeah, that one. <laughs> Good one, Philippa, nice. <laughs> Some of you might actually turn your head better if you slackened your jaw, by the way. <laughs> now, teachers, can you feel in your hands whether they're following you, whether they're helping you, or whether they're leading you? Can you make that discrimination? Following is fine. They're following your lead. Yeah. If they're leading you, that's not fine. That means they're using the muscles of their neck to turn their heads. For whatever reason, they, could be, they might have very good reasons for doing that. And that's where we need to be respectful. Okay. Is it, do they know they're doing this? So, so let's make a variation. Students, stop in the middle. Teachers, have your hands on your student's head and be ready to be moved by your student. Students, actively turn your head right and left. Students, be moved by, sorry, teachers, be ready to be moved by your students' head movements. First of all, teachers, can you feel, is this what your student was doing in some capacity? Students, notice the difference when you're intentionally leading. Feel that difference between you actively moving your head via your neck muscles and now switch that over, teachers, Teachers, now you do the leading, students, you do the following. Yeah, you're the boss, sort of. But they're kind of not the boss because you're still providing enough tension in the neck muscles to keep your head upright. Now, now we need to make another distinction. Students, let your neck muscles go slack. Oh, it's too, don't take your hands away, teachers. Can you feel that difference when your student goes, yeah, man, oh, I've had a hard day at work <laughs> and I'm paying 150 bucks an hour. I can rest in your hands. <laughs> now, so there's, can, yeah, you laughed. That means you felt the difference. Now, students, support the, own, support the weight of your own head. Support the weight of your own head and see if it's possible to let your teacher turn your head. Now, having done some of those variations, teachers, can you sense that there's a difference? So we've made some distinctions and that's the name of the game in most eight awareness through movement lesson, distinguishing this from that, A from B, C from D, etc. Great. Stop a moment. Let your hands off. Have a brief chat with your student and student with your teacher before we swap roles. Okay. 
Okay, swap roles. So teachers, you now become students as it should be. And students, you become teachers as it should be. Role reversal. Teachers, put your palms on your student's head. Yep. Now, begin to turn, to rotate your student's head between your hands. And I didn't say this before, but it, it's implied that teachers use the minimal amount of movement that you can do and still know that you're turning your student's head. What's the least you can do? And still get that feeling, yes, my student's head is turning in my hands. And when I look, I can see that their nose is going a little left, a little right. I can see one ear is going forwards, one ear is going backwards. And there's a correlation between what you feel in your hands and what you see with your eyes. Can you feel in your hands, is your student following you? Is they, are they helping, is they, is they helping you? Or are they leading you? Are they telling you what to do? Students, deliberately make the movement yourself. You turn your head, teachers feel the difference. People are very sneaky, you know. They say, oh, no, no, I'm not, no, no, I'm not leading. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Great. Now, switch that over again. Students, now you follow your teacher. Now, what, what was the next variation? Uh, students, give up supporting your own head. Give it up. Teachers, now you know what a head, oh yeah, that, oh, that's heavy. <laughs> yeah. Now, students, you support your own head. And return to turning your student's head between your hands students as much as you can as best as you are able be conscious that you're consciously allowing your teacher to turn your head and all that simply means is you're conscious of the decision that you've made it's not just a decision Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. All right, let that be and have a chat with your students. Student, you have a chat with your teacher. Make a follow-up appointment. <laughs> Something I never do. Should I make another appointment? Oh, it's up to you.
Okay, could you all please return to sitting on the end of the table and we'll continue with the ATM. So now you now you've created a, another distinction. Having had the opportunity for someone else to roll your head, you have a better idea of what it is for your head to be rolled, to, sorry, to be turned. So use that information. Put your hands on your head, the palm of one hand on the forehead, the palm of the other hand on the back of the head. Recall re-spark, reinvigorate that feeling of what it is for the hands to move the head and start to do it so that the head turns right, turns left, turns left, turns right. Get into a rhythm. Not a rhythm that sends you to sleep, but a rhythm that allows you to free up some of your attention. So you don't have to be so spot on with the neck and the head and the hands turning the head. And when you free up that attention, begin to form an intention to stand up. Don't do it. Just form the intention to stand up while you continue having your head freely rolling between your hands. That's like two intentions. Some of you will notice, as soon as you think the thought, stand up, something changes in your head and in your neck. And that wasn't a pun, something changes in your head. Go ahead and stand up. Stand up without interrupting the rhythm. Oh, you interrupted the rhythm. Stand up without interrupting the rhythm. so that every moment in that trajectory you can be conscious that you're conscious that your neck is free and it's not moving your head it's not turning your head <laughs> now perhaps some of you would like to practice in this in reverse so some of you would, might be benefit from this if you started at standing and were turning your head standing and then you intend to sit and some of you would benefit more if you started in sitting and you intended to stand so there's two options here. One is gravity assisted. The other one is working against gravity. Ah, some of you choose to go, okay, I'll just give that up for a moment. Very nice choice. Beautiful. Please have a rest. Yeah, a bit like that. <laughs> you 
teachers, students, can you get together again? Now you have a choice here. You can, you can play with your student in the process of going from standing to sitting, or if you choose between yourselves, you can go from sitting to standing, yeah? Teachers, your role is to keep checking, is your student's neck free? If it's free, then of course, you're not gonna feel any interruption in the rhythm of the turning. Yeah, that's the, that's the premise. And you're just gonna follow your student all the way down or all the way up, okay? You, you are constantly doing this with them, yeah? They're providing the oomph to stand. You can see my, I like that way of working. They provide the oomph and I provide the steerage. <laughs> I like driving cars. No, right. Yeah, so yeah, that's the idea. Teachers, teachers, listen up, teachers, roll their head in your rhythm, not their rhythm, roll their head in your rhythm. There we go. Go for just a little bit longer. Now, teachers, could you find how small and quick a turning can you make? Not too quick, because you don't want to go. Yeah. How small and quick can you make a turning and you can still detect that you're doing it? Okay. It could be that you just sense the skin of the forehead moving against the skull. That's enough. Yeah, yeah, the, the same the same process. I've just added a detail. That's it. Nice. Ooh.
Wonderful. Swap roles, please. Swapping the roles. I have the cheese and salami now. Pastrami on rye. Tuna fish and mayo. Sardines with onions. <laughs> oh, God. So teachers, do remember, find your rhythm. It's the dancing together metaphor. You know how to tango, and you're teaching them how to tango, and the tango has a particular beat, and they have to go with that beat. Oh, we're getting some good gorilla impressions. That's good. Cool. Okay. Students, you are supporting the weight of your own head. No, 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 no saggy neck. No saggy neck. No saggy neck. Sounds like a Greek dish, doesn't it? Saganeki. <laughs> Greek food lovers. <laughs> I didn't hardly got any sleep last night. And what's the minimal, what's the minimal turning that you can do that is your rhythm so that you can detect whether the, the neck remains free at all times? Okay, let that be, rest please, rest, rest, rest. I'm going to Russia. <laughs> I am. Okay, please return to the end of your table. And the, um, the question now is, if you stand up and sit down, is that going to be a different experience having done those variations with each other? I don't know is the answer. How will you find out? Well, you, set, you, you need to set yourself up in the same way that you did at the beginning. You become conscious of what you're doing. What is am I doing? I'm going to stand up to find out how do I do it and whether it feels different now. If you don't consciously set that up, then you're just simply standing and sitting. So go ahead, consciously set that up and find out, is it different now? Do you make, is it a different feeling for a start? Is it a different experience? 
And then secondly, are you forming yourself differently? Are you making different choices about how much bend in the knees, how much bend in the ankles, in the, in the hip joints, the trajectory of the head through space, you know, all that stuff that you know. Good. Now, stay sitting the next time you're sitting. And I know you've been trying not to intentionally move your head, but now I'm going to ask you the complete opposite. Could you begin to intentionally turn your head a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit side to side? Rotate the head a little bit, tiny, tiny, tiny. Just enough to know that you're saying no. This is the movement that a lot of cultures, a lot of people in different cultures make to say no, no. Now, let's make a difference. Nod your head to say yes. Yes. No. Yes. No. So just a tiny little movement as if you're saying no, no. Now keep that no going. Keep the no going and come to sit, come to stand, come to stand, go to sit without that any interruption in the no. So that the head is making at least, at least, you're, dis you're making a no movement at least six times before you stand up. At least. Yesterday we were using the breathing, remember? At least four breaths to climb up, at least four breaths to go down. Now at least six no's. No, no. Are you standing up? No. Are you sitting down? No. Ooh, we're getting into Zen. Sitting does itself, my friend. I do not sit. Sitting does sitting does me in. Actually, you keep doing that. Actually, the very first book I ever read on Alexander Technique by Michael Gelb, G E L B. When I read it, I'd read a lot of literature on Zen by that stage. I went, God, this is Zen. Because, you know, in the Alexander technique, they talk about not doing. Not doing, which I thought was like fascinating. Right. Let that be. Rest a little bit. What the hell does that mean, not to do? I think it just simply means you're not trying to intentionally muscle in on the act with your consciousness. Now you intend something, you go to do it, and then you observe yourself doing it without the mind going, nah, don't do it like that, do it like this. Or I am going to do this so well that Zoran will be impressed. Or I will be impressed, or whoever's going to be impressed. Yeah? You just do it, and then you observe. Okay, could you pair up again, teachers and students, and let's try a slightly different head movement. Where's that skeleton? Oh, yo, vai. I've got a mind, I've got a head splitting headache, man. Okay. Oh, this is useless. Okay, forget it. I've got to use it. You'll never do the exercise again if I demonstrate with that. So, so look, at, look at my hand. So one hand, right or left, it doesn't really matter. One hand cradle the very back of their skull in there. Because here where the neck meets the skull, 
the skull, the skull kind of curves around and you can just catch it and be underneath it. And with the other hand, you just form it to the forehead. So you've got the skull and the forehead, as long as you fit. Not bad, huh? Pretty good guess. Yeah, come up, that's fine. Come up more. Yeah. And then what you do is you just tip, tip. This is the yes. Now you're looking for the yes. You just did the no. Now it's the, this is, you need this one. Yeah, this one. Yeah. Now who's doing what? Who's leading? Who's leading? I haven't moved you yet. <laughs> You're doing all the leading, my, 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 my person. Yeah? Let me do the leading. And what you'll feel with your partner is they either like the upwards of the yes, or they like the downwards of the yes. Julietta doesn't like the downwards. She likes... Oh, yes, 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 this. She likes this. She don't like this one. <laughs> Can you feel that? Yeah, because I feel the tension in her neck right here. Yeah. So whatever your partner can do, do it with them. Yes, yes, yes. And this is the movement of the head right at the very, very end of the spine. Just like your pelvis sits at the very, very end of your femur, this is your head moving at the very, very... Ah, see, I should have said that earlier. That's made a difference for you, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you just don't know what's going to make a difference. That's it. Find that. Thank you, Julieta. Yeah, yeah find that. Um, Given that I don't know what makes a difference, the anatomy is this. If you, um, if you put your hands in that shape like that, and if you think that you've got a big beach ball in your hands, that's the head, which is the big beach ball, actually sitting on these two little bones, these little kind of divot bones. That's what the head sits on. And it slides around inside there. And it can slide everywhere. It can slide that way. It can slide that way. It can slide everywhere. Very small movement. So that's what you're looking for. The yes at the very, very end of the neck. Okay? Yeah, you can find the same thing there. I'll show you. I'll give you a feel. That's what I did with you the other day. Yeah. That. You're looking for that. That's what you're looking for. It's the skull, yeah, yeah, basically. And it's like, so here's the skull comes in and you're doing, that's the top of the spine. That's what you're doing.
Okay, please swap roles. The, the lovely thing about your hand is how many shapes it can make. So really, you can teach it, you can shape your hand to fit the, the underneath of their skull, you know, like a glove almost. The two just fit. Same thing with your other hand on their forehead. You can shape your hand so that you just fit. And I forgot to remind you before you switched, but I just remembered now, so sorry. When you're in contact with your student like that, what you could eventually aim for, you don't have to do it now, but what you could eventually aim for is to move them so small that it feels like your skin is moving on the palms of your hands, and that's it. Do you know what I mean? that there's just enough drag for your skin to be moved and your skin to be moved. That's how small it can become. So that's something to kind of practice for, for the future. Some people need that delicacy. Not everybody. Yes, 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 yes. I will come back for another appointment. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yes. Great. Please stop. Please stop and uh, rest. I think I've probably mentioned it already in the last two weeks, but I'll mention it again. Uh, Feldenkrais actually had uh, Alexander lessons with Matthias Alexander. He said of Matthias Alexander, he had the most superb hands he ever experienced in his life, with that kind of interaction with his hands. Which means, you know, when I hear that kind of comment, and having had experienced a lot of Alexander lessons myself, what that tells me is that the teacher's intent is so clear that nothing else is happening in those hands other than the intent that's circling inside them. Yeah. 
it, everything comes back to that. And we explored a little bit of that the other day. Remember with the rollers and the, um, the bendy, bendy tubes and things like that. Now, this next section of the lesson is based on Alexander's ideas. Feldenkrais had different ways of expressing them. You'll, um, there's a series of lessons series. It's a whole three different lessons. You're doing one of them now. That he talks about being small and being tall. Being small and being tall. Another one of those Zen things. How can you hold both intentions at the same time? Small, tall. Well, um, I tried that with your colleagues up in Sydney. It's like, what the hell are you talking about? So I don't think it kind of works. I think the idea is great because here's what I think the idea is. If you, if you muscle it too much, you know, if you try to hold yourself too much, you, muscles, muscles pull you in. That's all muscles can do. Yeah? That's thinking small. If you then, yeah, if you let go of that too much, you just go, Ooh. So there's something he's trying to get at about just enough the amount of contraction. But I'd rather teach it the way that it's taught in Alexander Technique because I just think it makes more sense. So you've established all of this, yes? So there's a freedom of the head this way and there's a freedom of the head this way. The freedom of the neck of the head is a central idea in Alexander Technique. Full stop. We have a lot more. We have bell hand that as you come to sit and stand, you can just do the bell hand. Yeah, we have that. We have the breathing that you can sense the breathing and nothing contradicts the breathing. Yeah, we have that. So we have a lot of other ways as well. So here's, here's the thing that you'll be playing with. In Alexander Technique, they have this idea of you have an intention. What's the intention? Stand up, sit down. That's the intention. Then you have a direction, which I like to translate. You give yourself some sort of measure that you're going to use to assess the quality of what you're doing. It could be bell hand, could be your tummy. In this case, the freedom of the neck. Yeah? I will I will stand and my intent and, and, and I will direct myself to stand direction intention direction I will direct myself to stand in such a way that my neck stays free. All right, great. But what happens if it doesn't? What happens if somewhere along that trajectory you start to feel? Yeah somewhere in that, the neck stops being free. Then here comes the third part, intention. You're directing yourself to do it in a certain kind of a way. And then the last part is should it fall apart, you inhibit. The moment you notice that it's not how you want to be doing it, you inhibit. You go, no, I'd rather not. I think I'll just stop for a moment and I'll start again. So, you know, if I've, got, if I've got this going on and there's a right there, right there, just caught there. No, I'd rather not. I'll just stop. No, I could stop here and go find it again and then continue. Yeah. It's not quite reversibility, something else. Yeah. So the intention, standing to sitting, the direction, keeping the neck free, keeping the neck free. And when the neck is free, funnily enough, I neither feel short, nor do I feel tall. So it kind of fits. And should, it, should you feel that quality disappear, you go, inhibit, stop, start, stop, start. This is in the very first lesson in the ATM book, sitting to standing, yeah? Where it says, should you find your breathing, you just stop there, re-find your breathing, and then start again. So it's inherent. Let's add something though. Could you get a roller and sit on it?
Yeah, not a soft one. If you need, uh, if you need some padding for your um, sit bones, wrap, uh, wrap a towel around it. Yes, you'll get to pair up in a moment. Yep. So now sit on the roller and this adds a little bit of spice. Just adds a bit of spice because you'll now find out that when you have that neck free and you go to stand up, if you push the roller with your butt, it won't be there when you come back. <laughs> It'll be somewhere else. <laughs> Yeah, so now, first of all, know what your intention is. Your intention is to stand up, sit down, okay? How will you direct yourself like a good theatre director? How will you direct yourself? Well, I will, I will look for that freedom in my neck that I've experienced. I will look for that, that freedom in my neck. Whether you want to do it saying yes or whether you want to do it saying no, it's up to you but you look for that freedom, and should it disappear, you just say, no, I'd rather not continue. I will refine my, my, my quality, and I'll start again. So that's the game. Play the game for a little while. Catch yourself out many times. By the way, it took Alexander seven years to figure this out. No, really. There's a yeah, seven years it took him to figure out why the hell, when he went to speak, he kept on losing his voice. And it boiled down for him, it boiled down to every time he went to speak, he would stick his chin out and shorten the back of his neck. And then he thought, he, I got it now, I can stop it. Eh, wrong. <laughs> he had to invent another thing. It's a great little chapter in his book, The Use of the Self, where he describes how he discovered his technique. Very much worth reading. Now, the important thing is not to become a stick. as Feldenkrais was so fond of rudely saying, Alexander teachers look like they've swallowed a stick. That's pretty mean. That's not professionally. But when an Alexander teacher says it of other Alexander teachers, I go, okay, fair enough. <laughs> Except Alexander teachers usually say it differently. Sometimes Alexander teachers become Alexandroids. They become like these little robots that have to do it just so, and they can't free themselves of that. That's not, that's not it. So please don't become Feldenkraisoids and don't become Alexandroids. Be yourself with the intent that you hold for yourself, with the direction that you give to yourself. And find your uniqueness. That's the message. Find your, un find your uniqueness with a free neck. Good. I can see that you all return to your rollers. That's great. Are you sure it was free? No, I don't think so either. <laughs> Roller one, Karen nil. <laughs> That's okay. Good. Say that, say that again. 
I said, at least I could feel it. It's not free. Great. Yep, that's, that's it. At least you knew that it's not free. That's good. And uh, when your client comes back the next day or the next week and they tell you that, look, I really had a hard time, but actually, I, I was actually catching myself out. You know they've done really well. They've done really, really well. Okay. Stop. Could you once again pair up into your student teacher roles and get yourself another roller? So now you've got a roller to sit on and you have a roller to put where? Underneath your feet. Two, because you'd be switching roles. Yeah, two roles, one role at each. So students, can you sit on your roller and could you place the soles of your feet on the roller on the floor? No, that's a bowl of fruit. Carmen, Carmen Miranda, yeah? <laughs> Uh -huh. Now, teachers, teachers, your role now, you know how yesterday you had the pillar and you had the chair just, just for that? You can have your hands there and Angela can decide either to how much she wants my hands or how little she wants my hands. That's it. No assistance, just a presence there going, I'm here for you, babe. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's... The... Now, there is something a little... One, one thing to add. As I stood in front of you, I realized there's something tricky here. Because if I stand in front of Angela, I'm like a barrier in front of her. Yeah? Depending on how they feel, they might want to come towards you or they might not. So perhaps you can go, all right, how will I do this? Oh, come on. Yeah. I, that's my solution. I don't think it's a very good one, but yeah. Play with that. No, you're not helping them. Okay. Students. You know what to do. Stand up, sit down, and as soon as you feel that your neck has not free, you stop. And then you start again when your neck is free. Teachers, this is how you get really good biceps. Whoop. Yeah, wonderful. Just step off the roller. Yeah, good. <laughs> I know, I know. It's better to step off and go, yep, I did that intentionally. <laughs> now, the other thing that um, teachers, the other thing that you can do, teachers, is that you can offer suggestion about form. So if you look at their feet, you go, oh, well, okay, maybe if they put their feet further apart, close together, maybe if they pointed their toes out to the side, maybe they pointed their toes to the middle, maybe if they had a different part of their foot resting on the roller. Be ready to give up your be ready to give up your intent should your neck become stiff. I will get this. I'm gonna get this. <laughs> easy, 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 easy. Oh yeah, there's that's an interesting moment, isn't it? When all the weight shifts onto the roller. It's a really important moment.
Now, like before, you can choose to do the sitting to standing part, or you could choose to start in standing and go towards sitting. It's up to you. those head movements. All right, please swap roles. Swap roles. Give it up. 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 Zen teacher with a stick walking around. So your intention is to stand or sit you, and you're giving yourself the direction, uh, let my neck be free. Let my neck be free. It could be, let my breathing be free. It could be, let my hands be soft. It could be, let my gaze be soft. There is no need to succeed. Teachers, it's very helping, it's very tempting to want to help your student. Don't. Teachers, it's very, uh, it's very tempting to want to help your student with your hands. Don't. Offer them, offer them verbal suggestions. As long as you know, you know, as long as you know that your neck is free, you can make whatever shape you like with your torso. You know that, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. You know you could have your feet on the roller differently, don't you? Oh, you don't. Well, why don't you try this out? <laughs> I'm just, I'm doing that. Yeah. yeah. As long as you know that the neck is free, so that's the first thing, right? The rest will start to organise as you go.
Okay. Could you please swap roles again? And we stop. First of all, stop. Inhibit. <laughs> I, so instead of working in duos now, we'll need to work with trios because we don't have enough of the hard rollers to go around. So if you can organize yourself into trios. Wonderful. Oh, good. It works out. Excellent. So now, um, one of you decides to be the student and sit on the roller, on the table. Now, could you put one roller under each of the student's feet? so that the roller goes, the front of the roller goes toes and the back of the roller goes towards the heel. <laughs> yeah, so remember you've, you've already, that's it, that's it. No, 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 not, join, not joining them together. No, 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 no. You can have separate one on each one, that's fine. Now, yeah, okay. um, if anything, you'd want to put them underneath so that the rollers don't slip on the carpet. If you're worried about the rollers slipping, get yourself some of the anti-slip stuff and put them underneath the rollers. Better? Okay. <laughs> and then you get some spit, wipe it on your finger. Yeah, no. <laughs> All right. So here's, here's the game, and uh, I promise I won't interrupt. Um, switch over whenever you want to switch over. In other words, please don't get yourself tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those of you who are the student, it's the same deal. The intention is to stand, the intention is to sit, and then you're directing yourself. You're giving yourself directions, or yeah, I'm gonna let I'm gonna get let my neck be free. I'm gonna let my neck be free. And as soon as it's not free, I'm gonna stop. And then you inhibit the moment that you realize it's not free. Teachers. You've got the same deal going on. You're going to offer yourself as a source of support if needed. Now we have a spare person floating around. Spare person. You come to your teacher's head. The teacher's head. And you make sure that their neck stays free. Okay? Ah. <laughs> so, is the game clear? Play. The teacher's head. The person is offering their hands. No, no, no. See, Elizabeth's a teacher. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going off air for the next 10 minutes.
That's very good. Okay. You know that's fine. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm doing this weekend. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats without the rollers, without the gizmos, without the contraptions. Just sit at the end of your table. I said, um, sit at the end of your table, give up the gizmos, just just simply sit. Now, this business of a free neck is a really interesting one because, you know, when we're born as an infant, we, you, how, how big is our head? Is it one quarter of our length? You don't know. Who knows? How big is a baby's head? Yeah, pretty big, right? Yeah, so it's a huge. Ah. Yeah. That means, as an infant, there was a time in your life that you could not control the, the head movement. If you were upright, your head would just go, Ugh. We learned to do that. We learned to control our heads for a very good reason, because the world is an interesting place. So where do you start to learn it? Usually lying on your back, and you start, and you know, so this is the other interesting thing. Because the baby's head's so big, do you know that they lie with their head like that? It's not like that. The, because their head is big diameter, they lie with their neck long. That's like, you know, when you put something behind your head so your neck is long, you're more like a baby then. And then it's like, oh, the world's an interesting place. Yeah. If you then put the baby on their tummy, then this is boring. This is boring. Head control, head control rolling, head control roll, head control lifting. So it's a, this little business about having a free neck is perfecting your head control. That's all it is. That's it. Please try out again. So know that you're going to stand and sit in order to notice what's different now. Is something different? When I don't even hold that intention anymore to have the neck to be free, if I just simply sit and be conscious of how I'm doing it, and then be conscious that I'm conscious of how I'm doing it, what's it like? Is Are you making different choices, even though you haven't made a choice? That's an interesting thing, isn't it? What's the difference between a decision and a choice? It's like saying to somebody in front of a smorgasbord, you know, with about 20 dishes, what are you going to decide to eat? Let that be. Have a water in, water out break, and please gather up the front, and it'll be grilling time. Grilling. Yes, Lisa and Jenny and myself out there, totally exposed, ready with a free neck, of course. <laughs> Thank you very much for being in that process. That was lovely. <laughs>